Yeah, good morning everyone. Welcome back to uh, NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1. And uh, we just started discussing about uh, total synthesis of natural products having three membered ring. And in the last lecture we talked about total synthesis of eludine. And there we talked about uh, the utilization of carbonyl elides in making pi membered ring as well. Uh, today we will continue our discussion on the total synthesis of uh, natural products having three membered rings. And in that we will talk about total synthesis of a natural product called FR900848. This is a very interesting natural product isolated and reported in 1990 by Yoshida and his uh, group. And if you look at this molecule you can see there are 5 cyclopropanes. So, it is indeed a complex natural product, it is a nucleoside having a long chain and then the long chain has 5 cyclopropanes and 3 double bonds and this was isolated from the fermentation growth of streptoverticillium ferbens and it also showed exceptional activity against filamentous fungi such as Aspergillus niger. So, because of this structural complexity and also due to the biological activity uh, many synthetic groups were interested in the total synthesis of this natural product. And 5 years later uh, the first total synthesis was reported by Tony Barrett. And if you look at this molecule uh, as you can see uh, it is uh, indeed a complex natural product. The major challenges posed by this molecule are 1 there are 14 chiral centers in this molecule. Okay, of course, uh, you can say 4 are from sugar unit. So, that can be easily you know uh, obtained from commercially available starting material. But the remaining one, okay, they are not easy to you know make it and there are 5 cyclopropanes which I already mentioned and there are 3 E double bonds. Okay. So, these are some of the major challenges uh, one has to think about while planning a proper retrosynthesis. And according to Barrett, this can be first uh, disconnection um, can be done by just cleaving this amide bond. So, that is obvious disconnection when you have an amide and the easiest bond to cleave is the C n bond. Okay. So, that cleavage will give you the corresponding carboxylic acid and the nucleoside, the whole nucleoside is the other fragment. So, that actually simplified the retrosynthesis of FR900848 to making only this carboxylic acid. If we can develop a good method for making this carboxylic acid and this is a known compound or it can be easily made. Okay. And just coupling these two should give the natural product. So, with that he further uh, did retrosynthesis and this carboxylic acid can be made from this alcohol by oxidation and homologation using you know Wittig type reaction to get the corresponding dienoic acid. Okay. And this if you look at uh, his original idea was if you have this material then one can do this cyclopropanation here and here and followed by converting this diol into double bond. Okay. So, you have two double bonds and the two double bonds you do cyclopropanation. Then the diol which you get after removing this astronide you can convert that into a double bond. So, that was his plan and that in principle can be, up, can be obtained from this aldehyde and this Wittig salt. Okay. So, now you should have a proper method to make this particular fragment with 3 cyclopropanes. Okay. And if you look at the literature, what are the methods available for cyclopropanation? Okay. There are few methods, but one method which should come to your mind immediately is Simon Smith cyclopropanation. So, Simon Smith cyclopropanation is nothing but if you take an alkene and treat with iodomethane in the presence of zinc copper couple at ambient temperature you can easily cyclopropanate an alkene. Okay. And this was reported way back in 1958. It is believed that it goes through 
a zinc carbonide type mechanism. Okay. So, like how if you have a carbonide, how it can undergo a cyclopropanation. The same way when you have <coughs> zinc as a metal, so the zinc carbonide uh, you know undergoes cyclopropanation of a normal double bond. And this is the mechanism. So it goes through uh, the three-membered transition state, and uh, followed by removal of zinc iodide. So in the process, zinc iodide comes out after delivering the CH2. And based on the evidence, based on the products, based on the mechanistic studies, uh, there was no free carbon involved in this reaction. Always, the metal was involved. The carbonide was involved. Later. Um, so once you introduce the cyclopropane, okay, later many people were interested in introducing this cyclopropane asymmetrically because when you do a cyclopropanation, you introduce two chiral centers. So if an asymmetric method can be developed, then it will be very interesting. So that is how many people uh, were interested in developing asymmetric strategy for cyclopropanation. The first method which uh, was reported by Andy Charrett. So, what he did he used allylic alcohol and also a chiral auxiliary. So, he started with a sugar unit. Okay. So, you can see you have a sugar portion okay, and then allyl group and this hydroxyl group actually helped in directing the cyclopropane. So, he took this compound and then treated with the same combination that is you know CH2I2 and diethyl zinc which in situ prepares you know CH2, ZN and I, I. Okay. So this gave about 98 percent yield with a diastereomeric excess of 50 is to 1. So this was a very, very interesting method and this is the mechanism and this is how uh, the free hydroxyl group. Okay. So first it uh, the it forms a bond with zinc, then it coordinates with zinc and CH2I and then intramolecularly the CH2 is delivered to the double bond. Okay. And Varindra Agarwal in 2003, he reported another asymmetric cements with cyclopropanation using ephedrine type amino alcohol and here also it gives a very good diastereomeric ratio 98 is to 2 and exactly following a similar pattern. So in these two cases what we have seen is you need a chiral auxiliary. You can see that this is a this is a chiral auxiliary and you attach the allyl group that do the cyclopropanation. So it will be nice if you do not have to use chiral auxiliary and if you have to use a chiral promoter or chiral controller or chiral catalyst then this reaction will be much better. So with that Charrett prepared a very interesting uh, you know you can call it a chiral controller dimethyl tartaric acid ester was used and he prepared this boron, boronate ligand. Okay. So this was used almost you know a stoichiometric amount nevertheless what you can see is the main difference is this is not attached to your allylic alcohol, it, this is not attached to your double bond. Okay. So you can add separately and then recover it if you want. Okay. So that way this reaction also gave very good E, 90 to 94 percent E. So this reaction has been successfully used in many such cyclopropanation reaction where you take simple allylic alcohol and as usual zinc iodide and then diode of methane and add this ligand that gives very high E of this cyclopropyl methanol. Okay. And when you do this reaction you can also use hydrogen peroxide because the way you have to use hydrogen peroxide is as you know you use boronate ester. So to remove the side uh, you know side products from boron you always use hydrogen peroxide work up to get the corresponding cyclopropanated methanol in good yield as well as in good E. So this is the mechanism, so I will not go into the details as you can see here the boron coordinates uh, with uh, 
oxygen and it later it forms the covalent bond with zinc and zinc, zinc also forms uh, uh, coordinate bond with uh, oxygen of the amide then it transfers the CH2 hmm, transfers the CH2 from the same side so that you get higher selectivity ok. And then since it is a chiral controller or chiral promoter you can reuse this. Now coming back to the total synthesis of FR90048, so E also started with uh, diethyl tartrate, the starting material for one of the fragments is diethyl tartrate and protect the hydroxyl groups to hydroxyl groups as acetonide, then reduce the ester uh, esters as a diol and protect one of them as it is symmetrical, one of them can be easily protected as TBS ether, then oxidize the other alcohol, other primary alcohol under certain condition to get the aldehyde. Once you have this aldehyde, then you can do a Wittig reaction with uh, ethyl bromide uh, derived Wittig reagent and then use uh, Manfred Schlosser's uh, condition that is uh, you have to use excess phenyl lithium. So, that gives a trans double bond, E double bond. Then remove the TBS group and oxidize, so you get one fragment which is required for the total synthesis of FR90048. Then the other fragment is started with this diene diol and used anti charates uh, cyclopropanation and you could introduce these two cyclopropanes in one step, okay, it is a symmetrical compound. So then protected one of the hydroxyl group, so it is since it is symmetrical one can easily protect one of them as TBS ether, so you could protect successfully one of them as TBS ether. Then the other alcohol was oxidized to aldehyde with PCC, then a stabilized Wittig on that aldehyde gave the corresponding alpha beta unsaturated ester. Here the E z ratio is 19 is to 1 uh, which is separable. Then you reduce the ester to alcohol. Normally one can use LAH, here you use dibol and do another cyclopropanation using same Charles protocol. Okay. So now the next step is to convert the CH2OH into CH3. So first he wanted to convert this CH2OH into corresponding sulfone and then do reductive removal, removal of the SO2PH. So first the alcohol was converted into SPH using a Mitsunobutype reaction by treating with tributyl phosphine and N phenyl sulfide. Okay. So, you could convert that OH into corresponding SPH. This was oxidized with oxone to get the corresponding sulfone. But what he could not achieve was the removal of this sulfone to get the methyl. So, he tried several conditions, one of them is ranin nickel and ethanol and he could not get the corresponding methyl group. So, then he thought this may not be the right strategy, so he revised the strategy and for that he started with this diol which he already prepared. Okay. So, he took the diol, then he did the Wittig reaction uh, oxidation with PCC, then did the Wittig reaction that is the stabilized Wittig, only difference is in the earlier earlier case he protected one of the alcohol as TBS ether, then oxidized the other alcohol to aldehyde. Here he oxidized both the alcohols with PCC to get the dialdehyde and the dialdehyde he treated with the stabilized Wittig reagent to get bis ester, bis alpha beta unsaturated ester. So here he got a mixture of uh, both required EE and EZ. Of course, this is a major iso isomer, but this minor isomer also you could convert into the major isomer by treating with uh, phenyl thiol or benzene thiol and titanium tetra isopropoxide and butyl lithium. Okay. So, this, this is a nice reagent combination which, which isomerizes the cis or Z isomer to E isomer. Okay. So, since he needs only the E isomer, so the E isomer was taken and he has taken it forward 
uh, reduction with the dipole uh, with the excess uh, dipole gave the diol. Once you have the diol here you can do two cyclopropanation here and here. So now you can see he has introduced four cyclopropanes. Overall how many cyclopropanes he has to introduce? Five. But these four are contiguous then you have a double bond in between followed by another cyclopropane and methyl group. So this diol then is selectively protected one of them as TBS ok. So since this is symmetrical you take this alcohol and protect it as TBS ether then oxidize the other primary alcohol then do the Wadsworth Immons Wittig reaction to get the corresponding diene ester. Again you got a mixture of E, E and of course E and E Z that E Z can be converted into E, E by following the same process which I had already discussed and this upon further reduction with the dibol H he got the di, diene alcohol ok. So, this is again now it is full E, E ok. Then this allylic alcohol he could successfully selectively do the cyclopropanation as I said what you need is another cyclopropane, another cyclopropane and this four cyclopropanes and this cyclopropane should have should be linked through a double bond ok. So, you could selectively do the cyclopropanation on the terminal double bond which is now allylic alcohol. So, you could successfully do so you can see all the five cyclopropanes required for the synthesis of FR 900848 are done. Then now he tried this uh, conversion of uh, CH2OH to corresponding SPH. So, this reaction worked and at this stage he removed using Rani nickel ok. Then that SPH was removed and then we got the methyl group then ammonium fluoride removed the TBS got the alcohol and oxidation of this primary alcohol with PCC he got the aldehyde. And again a Wadsworth Immons modification of this Wittig reaction gave the diene ester ok. And again he got a mixture of E and Z that was converted into EE using the conditions which he already used twice. Then he tried to saponify this ester to carboxylic acid. So, all the conditions gave decomposed product. So, finally used a simple KOTMS hydrolyze the ethyl ester to carboxylic acid. So, now if you look at uh, the structure of FR900848, so this is the side chain which should be attached to the nucleoside. The side chain is prepared. Now, let us see how the nucleoside is prepared. So, the nucleoside is here, then what he has to do? He has to combine this amine with the carboxylic acid to make the natural product. So, he took this commercially available alcohol ok this is uh, made in uh, uh, 3 steps from D ribose in uh, you know in kilogram scale. Um, this primary alcohol was converted into mesylate and then mesylate underwent an SN2 reaction with sodium acide to get the corresponding N3. Then the N3 is reduced to get the corresponding NH2 and the astronide ok the protected astronide was cleaved with 80 percent acetic acid to get the nucleoside which is required for the DCC coupling with the carboxylic acid. So, what he did he did not do the DCC coupling he took the carboxylic acid and then treated with this phosphoryl chloride. So, this is called BOPCL ok. Then added this amine ok. So, that gave directly this FR900848. So, if you look at this uh, whole synthesis the key reaction is nothing but introduction of cyclopropanes. There are 5 cyclopropanes 
he could successfully introduce and also he established 3 EE double bonds and of course uh, he did not face much problem in making this nucleoside. So overall uh, the total synthesis of uh, for uh, 900848 was accomplished in 15 longest linear steps by Barrett's group and uh, Andrew Charrett's asymmetric cyclopropanation was used as the key step in introducing all the 5 cyclopropanes. Okay. So with this uh, now we have discussed total synthesis of 2 natural products having cyclopropane. Now we will move to uh, natural products and non-natural products having 4 membered ring as the key substructure. Okay. So thank you.